good evening guys Tony back again or in Todge hope you're all well Tuesday evening here in the UK and we're on to day 26 of the 31 days of horror and I've just watched the first time watch again absolutely mental film so we watched tonight some Japanese cyberpunk from the early 90s and the film I watched is um, 964 Pinocchio from 1991 absolutely mental film it's uh like I said, this Japanese cyberpunk movement from, I think it started in the late 80s and ended pretty early in the 90s or halfway through the 90s. Uh, like independent guerrilla filmmaking from some Japanese guys, you know, um, uh, Shinya Tisamoto, he done like Tasuto, Iron Hammer and things like that. He was a big influence in this. And uh, yeah, that, that, that got a lot of praise. And then a few other directors sort of done the cyberpunk movement with the like uh like expansion of rock music and stuff from like europe and america into sort of japanese culture and it's not cyberpunk as you think of you know uh the running man or something like that or blade runner not that sort of cyberpunk but it's just really strange really crazy filmmaking absolutely yeah bonkers off the scale so we'll get straight into this guys so I'll say Pinocchio, um, I'll just call it Pinocchio, but it's 964 Pinocchio. It's directed, I'm, I'm going to butcher these names. I think it's Shozin Fuku, Fuku Fukai. Shozin Fukai, I think that's how you say it. And say so it's pretty guerrilla filmmaking. You know, there's hardly no one in this who sort of stayed acting or anything like that. So um, essentially we've got some casting here, Own Chan. Uh, Kyoko Hara and Nishina Goda. So, like I say, I probably butchered those names, but you know what I mean. It's uh, they're hard to pronounce for me. And basically, what happens is in this, um, at the start of it, it's in black and white, and you sort of see this guy getting ripped around by these nurses. And then it turns to colour, and you see, um, is this sex slave? So he's like a. Um, a program sex slave all his mind's been wiped and he these sort of middle-aged japanese women buy these sex slaves to like obviously they're, they're they're really into sex and all that shit and um he, he can't get an erection so he ends up they end up chucking him on the side of the road like he do not work like a like a sex doll basically it's just absolutely mental film and he's wandering around he's, his mind's been sort of wiped and he, do, he can't speak he can barely walk he can you know, he's just really strange looking with this sort of bold head with this tuft of hair. Really strange. And it's a really weird film. And he's sort of wandering around um, the Japanese streets. And this girl called Him uh, Himiko spots him with these binoculars. She's like an homeless girl. And she's sort of been the same thing. And she spots him a mile off, takes him under her wing. And um, yeah, after that, guys, after the, she starts to feed him and learn him how to speak, and it's called Pinocchio because he keeps like keeps saying Pinocchio, Pinocchio. That's the only thing he can say for the like first half of this film, and it just gets absolutely mental. So I think these films are not really meant for dialogue and sort of their storylines. They're meant to like uh, visual tests on the eyes and and the ears because the sound of this is just shouting constantly all the way through, and people are just running around and just. Just ah, and this Japanese language, it's just absolutely mental. You know, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen a crazier film before than this. And she takes him under her wing. Then they have this weird sort of kiss. And then his body starts to start transforming, like, into these weird shapes. And, um, you know, it's very David Cronenberg, you know, all blood and guts. And they keep, the pair of them keep spewing up. And this like white spew, they keep eating it again. It, oh, it's sick! It's really strange, um, really sexual. Like I say, it, it's it's not going to be for everyone this sort of thing. And then towards the end, he starts to like, he gets this like big lump of concrete around his neck, chained to his neck to keep him down by this woman. And he just starts to run through the streets of bloody Japan. For about 20 minutes near the end of screaming and that's like 20 minutes of the film it's like really strange imagery like the, the sound the image i think the director went out to sort of 
test your sort of will to watch this film because it's really a really hard watch. It's a really strange, really surreal, dreamlike. You know, there's no real sense of story. There's things that happen in it as well. I'm not going to get into it because you have to watch it. But And you think, why does that happen? Like a Amanda starts running down the street and like, he, he, he says, oh, I've been looking for a daughter. Um, I've been trying to adopt a daughter. He just like grabs a kid and says, I've got a daughter. And then it's sort of, you don't see nothing else of that. It's just really weird filmmaking. This uh, Japanese cyberpunk guys. It's just, yeah, it was the craziest film I've ever seen. So uh, I'm not going to get too much into it. I can't really, I, I can't really describe it to be fair. Just these pair of oh, absolutely mental heads. Just running, screaming and... Um, yeah, but something kept me intrigued. It was um, definitely an experience. Someone that I think as horror fans should check out because it's just, I don't know, absolutely mental. There's all, there's lots of blood and, uh, yeah, but like I say, really low budget filmmaking with next to zero budget. And like I say, gorilla style, I think even some of these shots of the camera, uh, they're all blurry because I think they've had one take at them. And they've sort of ran through the streets and people, are look, onlookers are looking as if to say they don't even know anything about what's happening. You know, it's just sort of guerrilla filmmaking. But um, yeah, just an absolute mental film. Uh, I can't say no more, guys. You'll know what I mean if you've seen it. So yeah, I, I don't know what I could give this. I'd probably give it five out of ten just for the, you know, I don't know, absolutely messed upness. Yeah, it's definitely got hints of Cronenberg in there. They've definitely watched some American filmmaking of his in the early 80s, like Videodrome and stuff. It's got that sort of feel about it. But this, it's just absolutely takes to the next level. And like I say, this cyberpunk stuff didn't last very long in Japan because uh, a lot of the filmmakers didn't have, have no budget. So it was sort of, it was sort of wasted. But yeah, it was a really interesting film to watch because of, because of the filmmaking. Everything's like, in your face, the, the weird camera angles, you've got like people talking to each other, but it's not like the dialogue what we normally have face to face. It's like one one face is over here, one's over here. It's just all over the shop, you know, the cinematography. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad I watched it. So get in the comments, guys. That's been tw day 26. Tell me if you've seen a 694 Pinocchio. Um, I think in, in, the, in this country, it came out as Screams of Blasphemy. But yeah. It's 964 Pinocchio in Japan. So tell me if you've seen it, what you think of this absolutely mental trip. I just gobsmacked and was like, whoa, you know, absolutely mental. But yeah, that's been day 26, guys. I've been Tony. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you tomorrow for day 27.